Where's the tweet? Oh, I got a tweet coming at you. I got a tweet coming your way. This is going to have the audience coming in in droves. You ready for this? Ready for this tweet list? Are, are you on my Twitter page right now? I'm completely ready. I know I'm on the Cult of Mac Twitter page. Oh, okay. Well, here we go. Just waiting for it to refresh. I just sent the tweet out. This is a nice tweet. You're going to love my tweets. I think we should, uh, yeah, we're live. Let's just go ahead and boom. And we're live. Welcome. Let's see here. Who needs a shout out here? Who's here early? Let's take a look. Oh, Todd Ellis. Hey, yo. Zach Hicks is here. Boot him out, Zach. If anyone gets lippy, kick him right out of here. Andy Broussard gives a very chipper. Hey, yo. Mooper son. Hi, I'm Mooper son. <laughs> well, welcome. Uh, Warren Rowland. I don't know. I don't know what emoji that is. I can't see. It's too far away. Ulysses Martinez says, "Hey yo, uh, Michael Cornelius. Hello and good day. Wow, what a gentleman." And uh, let's see, Todd Ellis, you already got a shout out. Waiting for that audio clip. Oh, I got an audio clip for you, Dan. <laughs> do it. Hey, LK. I guess Dan's just gonna ignore the rest of us. Okay, That's rude. <laughs> hey, Dan. Can't blame him. <laughs> Go blue, JD. Jeff's here. Chase McLean. Very chipper. Hello, and Adam Broussard. Looks like a dab emoji. Oh, okay. Oh, wait a second. Adam Broussard also wants a. Yeah, 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 yeah. That one's for you, Adam. I'm not gonna explain it, and I'm not gonna apologize for nothing. Stephen Bird. Hey, y'all. Sending love from Sydney. Hello. God, that's so bad. I'm sorry. I need to work on that before I ever try that again. Guys, we uh, have a great show for you guys today. Uh, L Lander is sick. He almost he, he almost just ducked out, but he's he's going to be a trooper. He's going to stay tuned for the show and uh, just sit there looking sad and mopey. He may not even say anything. <laughs> if you see him just whimpering, that's why he's sick. And funny enough, I was sick this last week too, which is why I'm in my comfortable attire. Although... Cool sweatshirt. You know what this is. If you know what this is, is you're in my posse. Saint Louis Arch? Is the Saint Louis Arch? <laughs> what is it? That's what it looks like. <laughs> oh, an anarchy shirt without the. It does kind of look like the Saint Louis Arch, doesn't it? No. Is it part of a cone head? Uh, yeah. It, it's the top of a cone head. He's busting through. Yeah. <laughs> he got his head stuck in something, <laughs> and then below it says, "We come from France." Uh. Yeah, so I, I was I was super sick. Like I don't know what was going on. You know, it's weird. Like I feel like when I get sick lately, when, when I got sick before in my life, I kind of knew what kind of sickness I had, and now I feel like it's always the same. I just feel awful. I don't know why. I don't have any discernible symptoms besides just feeling terrible. And uh, Leander was telling me that he was sick too, and he was describing the symptoms. I was like, dude, this is so weird. I had exactly what you had. All the exact same symptoms. Just felt super super drained. So lethargic. Runny nose, sniffles, a little bit of a sore throat. So it's probably just a cold. But <clears throat> it could have been the vid part D. We were trying to figure out if maybe that was it. But um, Lewis, uh, of course, Lewis is de facto. It's, you got the vid. It's always, that's always <laughs> Lewis's answer to any, anytime you feel anything. It's like, you got the vid, man. You got it. <laughs> you got it. You have all the symptoms. But the problem is, Lewis, is that the symptoms for, for, you know, you know who are the same as literally every other thing. It's like the cold. Yeah. Or you got an allergy. Or you just have allergies. Mine, mine definitely wasn't allergies, though. I felt, I, I thought maybe it was allergies, but I truly felt terrible. Uh, yeah, Todd Ellis is saying you got the Delta. You're part of the Delta Force, Lander, the very exclusive. <laughs> um, let's see here, Paul, Paula Dickinson. You can no longer complain about our Seattle weather having only two weeks. Oh, Se uh, Paul, are you from? Um, are you from Seattle? Well, oh, Seattle sister. Hey, yeah, it's been beautiful here. It's been too beautiful here. It was like 109 degrees. All right, so uh, let's go Set ahead. Up a cardboard cutout. <laughs> what? What was <laughs> Delta Squad? <laughs> we should, that, that would be a cool meme, actually. Sorry, what did you say, Lewis? It's just set up a cardboard cutout. Somebody says a cardboard Adam cutout. Broussard. A, cu a cardboard cutout of who? Me, I, I guess. Right? I uh, believe that would be Leander. Oh yeah. Well, we've had that. We've had that happen before, where Leander just gets disconnected or has hung up, and then it, I love it because it just freezes your frame, and you're just like. <laughs> And then we always eulogize you when you leave. Because <laughs> oh, you, you just froze and it looks like something you put in my like, great leader. 
Level Remix is here. Oh, Paula Dickinson. I'm sorry, Paula Dickman. Dickman. <laughs> She's from Seattle. Okay. Welcome, Paula. Uh, Substance D, tell us the secret feature. Oh, boy. It actually is very interesting, and I'll, I'll reveal the secret to you. So um, let's queue up. Speaking of the D, let's queue up Mrs. D, the one, the only. Where is she? And then we'll we'll get this uh, show on the road. Here, here we go. Mrs. D. <laughs> I hear my little LK feels sicky. Yes, he doesn't feel good, <laughs> Mrs. D. Ooh. Well, I'm going to make him a special pie and smash the pie in his face so he has healthy skin. Well, I think that first part sounds nice, but I don't know if he's going to want a pie in the face. No one wants a pie in the face, especially not the Puffco King. He's a very important feature, uh, very important figure, and we got to make sure that he gets back to health as soon as possible. Gets back to puffing, since uh, he's getting paid millions of dollars a year to be the Puffco mascot. They des they demand that he be puffing every day, so we got to get him back there. I'm I'm taking this joke way too far, so let's go ahead and get the. <laughs> just, for just, the just, end. just keeps going. <laughs> I really <laughs> don't know where it should stop. Sometimes, so I'm gonna go ahead and stop it there, and uh, we'll start the music. We'll uh, get this show going. Here we go. Hello and welcome to Cast the Best 30 plus minute alpha conversation you're going to hear all week long. I'm your host, Airfront Elijah. Joining me today, he created a whole new class of weightlifting called drinker sizing. He has two special size mugs that weigh close to 40 pounds each when filled. And then he just holds them like this and he goes, one, two, milk. And he just keeps going until they're all gone, getting buff, getting drunk at the same time. It's the way he exercises. He's the founder of Cultimac. Leander Kahaney is here. Hey. Also with us, he keeps his assortment of horse crops on display at the Cultimac World Headquarters. So the riders are reminded, typing speeds below 200 words per minute will be met with appropriate levels of discipline. That's how he keeps the articles cranking out. He's the managing editor of Cultimac. Lewis Wallace is here. Yeah, I really got to get a... Get that bull whip back in here. I could use it around the house. AKA <laughs> Papa Swan. Cat. Cats are <laughs> great. You know him. You love him. He is Smurfette's grandfather. Or is he her father? I don't remember. He's got that white goatee and Let's he's blue. Let's talk about it. Come <laughs> on. So Moving on. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Well, we have, a, uh, we have an amazing show for you all here today. <laughs> well, that might be an exaggeration. <laughs> it's going to be entertaining. We've got this week's best Apple stories. You can definitely count on that. We are going to be talking about uh, the uh, the MagSafe battery pack. And, God, what a weird device this is. And, and you'll know what I mean once we start going into this thing. It's just got a lot of weird quirks to it. And um, it's an interesting device. But for what it is, it just seems like it has a lot of limitations. But it also has an interesting feature built into it that reveals... There is some technology inside the iPhone 12 that we've talked about before that we didn't know for sure was there, but is definitely there. So we'll, we'll go into the whole story. Uh, let's see here. We have some updates on iPhone 13 and also, oh man, major, ma according to German, we got a major feature that's been cut from iPhone 13. Um, big old punch in the gut. Uh, maybe lower, depending on how excited you are about uh, <laughs> this this feature. It was more, it was the marquee feature. It looks like Apple cut it. So I'm, now I'm like, what the heck are they going to put in here? So we'll talk about that. We have more evidence that um, that a larger iMac with either the M1X or the M2X or something is going to be in the uh, the larger iMac. It's going to be way more powerful. I know we've talked about this before, but now we have even more affirmation that this is happening which i'm excited about uh we have better facetime cameras finally coming to all the macs which will be cool because they're all absolute doo-doo butter and we have one of <laughs> the funniest stories that we've done on this show coming up at the very end apple has made allegedly a tweak to their weather app to keep a certain number out of well, so that it would be out of the app and um, people wouldn't be offended and people wouldn't be offended by it. And if you're wondering what the number is, well, 69, dude. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's some advanced planning right there. <laughs> yeah, right. What's up, bro? Uh, I, the fact that you have to even ask me that question. Is that Ridgemont High? 
No, it's Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Oh, uh, okay. Okay, so anyway, uh, let's hear. Before we dive in, oh, shoot, where am I? Uh, where'd my browser go? There it is. Before we dive in, let me give a very chipper thanks to Square pa- Squarespace for supporting this episode. Squarespace.com forward slash cultcast. You've heard me talk about this probably 500 times. And if you still have not taken action well, uh, you are the biggest procrastinator on earth. You need to get in here, squarespace.com forward slash cultcast. Get started with your free trial. They have everything you need to grow online. And I've been using Squarespace for years. It really is so simple to build a website. And it will be a website that's beautiful that will scale to any device that visits it. So you don't have to like worry about making sure your images are the right size or that everything's in alignment. You just choose one of their templates and they do all the work automatically resizing your images, creating all the assets that are needed to make your device look good or make your website look good on any device that visits. And you can create you know, any kind of website you want. You can make a portfolio of your work. You can create a blog. You can do an online store. One of the websites I always feature or I highlight are, is like a personal or like CV web, web website, like a resume website. It's like a simple one-page website where you can have like a large image or a video taking up the entire website with some text over it and, and maybe a picture of you so you can highlight yourself to potential employers. This is especially good for, for students, especially for tech students. It just puts you, it gives you an edge. You know, It makes you look like you're smarter, better, more sleek, more veiny than all the other candidates. It might land you a job. You can start a website for your small business and uh, or your events, and you can keep it all updated yourself. It's just so easy to do. Everything's drag and drop. Super simple to use. Beautiful. And uh, if you're ready to give it a go, head on over to squarespace.com forward slash cultcast and start a free trial. Build a website. See how you like it. There's there's no com- there's no com- commit commitment that you need. Just build one, and, and and if at the end of your trial you want to continue your service, that's when you can give them your, your billing information. So they're not going to charge you automatically at the end of two weeks. You have to actually go and give them all your information, and um, and uh, then you can continue your service. And use code Coltcast at checkout. You'll get 10% off your first purchase at squarespace.com forward slash Coltcast, and the offer code to use at checkout is Coltcast. All right. Send it on over to the Papa, the Papa of all the Smurfs. Lewis Wallace, let's talk about MagSafe battery pack, Lewis. Not super sexy, I realize, but um, <laughs> you got to uh, uh, tell us about this this new battery pack. And if you have to take a break because Gargamel is coming for you, we'll totally understand. Oh God. <laughs> this, uh, yeah, this is a product launch. It was so uh, amazing. Apple didn't even send out a press release. <laughs> this thing just popped up on the website Tuesday. Oh, no, I, I didn't no realize website. that. All right. I just uh, released it on the old uh, website, uh, MagSafe Battery Pack. Uh, don't know if you've seen it. Looks uh, looks pretty cool. Yeah. Doesn't have a bump, you know. Th- thank God for that. I mean, it is a bump, technically. It, it, it yeah. They well, just it they, doesn't have a stepped bump. They just took the uh, the silicone cover <laughs> off. And they just gave you the the battery pack. <laughs> Anyway, so this yeah. is uh, it's designed. It was a MagSafe, uh, obviously. So it's designed to work with iPhone 12 series, uh, from the Mini all the way up to the Pro Max size, uh, and it's going to be work. It, it, I guess it has to have iOS 14.7 to work properly, and that's you know, it should be out any minute, right? Uh, unlike other, you know, MagSafe compatible wireless battery packs that a lot of other people have uh, come out with, beating Apple to the punch by months. Uh, this one is MagSafe approved, straight from Apple. Uh, it adds hours of battery life. I don't know exactly how many. No, no <laughs> one does. Doesn't say that. How can yeah. that be? Uh, it, it says it uh, charges a connected iPhone at about five watts, which is actually lower than what they they, you know. I mean, MagSafe itself is 15 watts, right? So that's a little odd. A little bit of a question mark. Why it's that low? Um, maybe overheating problems. Maybe that's why it took them so long to even get it out in the first place. Um, when a MagSafe battery pack is attached to an iPhone and plugged into a lightning to USB-C cable, it's connected to a connected 20 watt or higher charger. The MagSafe battery pack will charge the iPhone at 15 watts. Yeah, so it's 15 watts when you have the battery pack plugged in, connected to the iPhone. <coughs> Excuse me. It's, when you're um, using it like a wired charger, a, a yeah. wired MagSafe charger. And, and so then it's 15 watts, but when you unplug the charger from the battery pack, then it drops back down to 5 watts, which I was like, dude, that is super low. I mean, yeah, just to kind of give weird. you guys some context, I, I have a um, I have a 36-watt car charger for my iPhone, and it splits it into 
into two channels, right? So it's 18 watts per channel. And at 18 watts charging wired, my phone charges, I have an iPhone 11 Pro, it charges super slow if I'm using it and trying to charge it at the same time. That's at 18 watts. So at five watts, I think it's safe to say that if you're using your phone at all while it's charging, it will actually continue draining. You, the only way to actually see your battery grow up, now this is just me thinking out loud here, and by thinking I mean uh, just uh, yeah, thinking out loud, is to turn the phone off and let the pack charge the phone while it's off if you want to see your, back, your, your battery actually increase. Five watts is mega low. Mega low. That's like, I think that's the original charging speed for the, um, or for the uh, original iPhone charging, you know, a little dongle that you had to plug in before. So uh, that's super low. Sorry, go ahead, Lewis. Sorry. No. Uh, so the MagSafe battery also enables a secret reverse wireless charging mode on iPhone 12. If your iPhone is plugged in via a lightning cable and the battery is attached, your iPhone will wirelessly charge the battery pack, which sounds bizarre to me. Have you figured? I, I've yet to figure out what reason that exists for. Well, they say because. Oh, oh, oh it's plugged in. I well, guess it, yeah. that, that's how you can charge it up when you're at home. I got it. I was, I was, that's how stupid I am. I was imagining like being out at a cafe or something, uh, trying to trying to use my phone to charge up my battery pack. And go, uh. <laughs> you can charge so so the, I get the, it now. the battery pack is USB C built in, so you can charge the battery pack on its own. You can also charge the phone when the battery pla pack is plugged in, right? So it will be charging the battery and it will also be charging the phone. Or and this was the hidden feature, and this is very interesting. So we've talked about reverse wireless charging before. This was a feature that we thought existed in the iPhone 12, but we didn't have any evidence of it. Well, now we have evidence that it is indeed built into the iPhone 12. So you can plug the iPhone in with lightning and with the USB or with the MagSafe battery charger attached, the phone will charge the battery wirelessly, which we've never seen before. So that functionality clearly exists in the iPhone, and it makes me think, well, why can't you just plug the iPhone in to lightning and then put a pair of AirPods on the back of the iPhone and have oh, the yeah. air, right? Like that's what we were waiting Are, for. So is that, you think they're going to release that like iOS 14.7 is going to uh, magically turn that on. And this, this hidden feature we've heard about for what a year, right? That, I mean, supposedly it's been it's sitting there unused, right? L latent. Like if, if I had to guess, I would say they were going to add this feature f to the 12. For whatever reason, they pulled it. And I bet we will see reverse wireless charging added to the 13. And then the future, once the iPhone 13 is a little bit older, they're going to add that feature via software update to the iPhone 12. That's oh, that's my man. theory. That's, that's pretty cynical. <laughs> well, they they do this. They, I mean, they do this. They, they did some of this well they did something like this with um the iphone 10r i believe they released i forget what feature it was there were some camera features they released on the iphone 11 iphone 11 pro and then once those features were out for a while they went back and they and they they added those features to the 10r once it wasn't like a marquee selling point feature for the iphone 11 so they definitely do this right like they look at what the phone is capable of and the marketing part department says okay well what should we add to this model that we that will refrain from adding to the previous model so that people will buy the new phone that's just that's just my theory cuz clearly this technology exists in the iPhone 12 so why wouldn't they just let you do this for your AirPods charge wirelessly on the back of the phone clearly it can do it right i mean it can charge battery pack why couldn't it charge a pair of AirPods so I bet you this is going to be something that they add to the uh, the iPhone 13. Anyway, they say um, for uh, for for charging wirelessly, one of the reasons why it uh, is going to be slower than 15 watts is because they are trying to prevent overheating. And in fact, there's a note here. Uh, is this from the Mac Rumor story that um, Apple says that there is some technology that they've built into the battery pack to make sure that it doesn't get too hot while you're charging your phone. And if you're in a hot place, it will only charge the battery up to 80% and then it will stop. And in certain scenarios, it will only charge your phone up to 90% and then it will stop and you have to go into the settings and tell it to keep charging. Does this sound confusing? That's my point. Is there's like all these weird quirks built into this battery pack, not to mention this, the actual capacity of the battery is not very high. 
And so I don't think you'll be able to charge any of the iPhone 12s up to full if any of them are dead. Maybe the mini? The but, mini, and it's only like 95% or something. And then the is max really? is like 50%. Yeah, so I, I, it just kind of seems like a really odd device. It doesn't charge any of the phones up to max. There seem like there are these limitations that are in place. And for 100 bucks, I don't, I don't know. I mean, it still And it took them nearly cool. a year to get it out, too. I mean, there was they were talking... Uh, there were initial reports, weren't there, in the beginning of the year that this was uh, was going to be coming out. Even then, it was late. But then they had all these problems with the thermal issues and yeah, so on and so forth. But uh, yeah, so it is kind of it is an odd duck. And in the meantime, there's a whole bunch of other ones, MagSafe batteries on the on the market. You can get like cheap fifty dollar ones off of Amazon. I've got a couple. I, I have one. I thought it was really good. I, you know, the, the MagSafe batteries, these external MagSafe batteries, are fantastic. Do they stick to your phone pretty well? Yeah, especially if you take the case, if you take a case, if you've got a case on, sometimes it's a bit, you know, marginal, <laughs> iffy. Yeah, but if you have a, if you take the case off, yeah, it sticks, sticks pretty good. So look, I'm, I, I just pulled up a MagSafe search, MagSafe battery pack search on Amazon, and one of the first ones that comes up is Unka, and there's this five thousand milliamp hours. Now, I believe Apple's is like eleven hundred milliamp hours. Uh, so no, it's like 4,700 like 4, or something. something. How much is it? Is Sorry. It really 12? I thought it was 2,300 or something. Oh, I thought really? it was just below the anchor one. Okay, hold on. I'm looking it up. Oddly right enough, now. looking at yeah. the Apple website, it doesn't even actually – I don't see that information on the website well, even. That, no, it's people bizarre. figured it out because it says it on the fine print on the, on the battery No, it itself. is. It's, uh, it's 1,460. It's 1,460 wow. milliamp hours. Really? So it's, it's it's small. Yeah, that was one of the things that surprised me. I'm looking at the story right now. Um, God. Mac Rumors has a breakdown of it. And so the Anker one is, what is that, one, two, three, over four times, or just I guess um, just under four times is powerful. So with the with the Anker one, which is only $46, I mean, so I, I just kind of, I it, it just seems kind of odd. It just kind of seems like an odd thing to me. It's like you can get the, the Anker one for... Um, you know, forty six bucks, and it's way more powerful. Or you could spend twice as much and get apples. It just kind of seems like an. It, it just seems like an odd mix of features for this specific product, and they have a ton of other the, ones, of course. On uh, the Anker one doesn't have the Apple logo. Well, that is worth fifty five dollars. <laughs> fifty bucks. You might be right about that. But uh, you know, there's all these other strange Amazon brands, which are just basically people buying stuff from Alibaba and trying to market it <laughs> on uh, on Amazon, like the Way T, and uh, let's see here, the Jiga and the Iwa. Looks like they're all probably the exact same battery pack. And so you can huh. get a battery pack, a MagSafe battery pack on Amazon. Oh, this one's ten thousand milliamp hours. That's that's actually ridiculous. That's huge. And that one you can get for thirty six dollars. So anyway, you know, know what your options are. Um, the Apple one charges wirelessly, which is cool. Uh, I don't know how useful that would be. And plus, like, how fast is it going to charge wirelessly? My my guess is it's going to be really slow. And it's going to take forever to actually charge the uh, the battery pack up if you're trying to charge it wirelessly. But so interesting. It, it does prove that that wh reverse wireless charging technology is in the iPhone 12. So what does that mean for the future? Hopefully it means that in the future that we will have the ability to charge an Apple Watch, that probably is not going to happen because Apple Watches don't charge via Qi wireless charging. But the AirPods do, and so it would be really cool to be able to just turn your iPhone over while it's plugged in via Lightning and just plop your, Air, your AirPods on top and charge them that way. That would be super cool. All right, so there's your, uh, there's your MagSafe battery pack update. It's 100 bucks. I think it ships out next week if you want to get one. You should probably order one now because, you know, all the YouTubers are getting their orders in so that they can make videos on this stuff. So you have to wait an extra week if you uh, if you don't get your order in quick. Let's talk about <laughs> iPhone. So we have some we have some news about iPhone that some of you aren't going to like. And uh, most of this comes out of a story from Bloomberg. The Germinator added again with a, a new report. And uh, let me see. Can I close this up? Yeah, there we go. And... Uh, Basically, it's this. So, well, let me let me just go through the story because the first part of this story has to do with um, Apple increasing their order for the iPhone 13. They expect to have up to 90 million. Uh, well, let me just read this because I'm going to screw it up. Apple has asked suppliers to build as many 
as 90 million next generation iPhones this year, a sharp increase from its 2020 iPhone shipments, according to people with knowledge of the matter. And for those of you who have been following Apple stock, this is one of the reasons why I think Apple stock is doing so well. Of course, Apple stock seemed to be impervious to any kind of company performance in the last, <laughs> I don't know, 18 months. Well, not, maybe that's too long, 12 months. It's just doing nothing but going sideways. This news, though, the stock market seemed to like this news. And all of a sudden, Apple stock started going up you know, super high again. And so I was happy to see that since I own so much Apple stock. Uh, let's see here. Uh, according to uh, German's report, this year's update will be more incremental than last year. Last year's iPhone 12. That was a major bummer. Emphasizing processor, camera, and display improvements, the people said, asking not to be named. Apple's planning updates to all the current models, spanning the 5.4-inch, the 6.1-inch, and, uh, oh, those are the regular phones, and then the 6.1 and 6.7 Pro models. Let's see, what else is interesting about this story? While the design of the new Apple iPhones will remain unchanged, the company, largely unchanged, the company plans to reduce the size of the front-facing camera and face unlock sensor cutout, or notch, to better match its rivals. Apple hopes to eventually remove the notch entirely in the future, uh, in a future version of the iPhone, although it will probably just make it smaller as of next year. Apple's camera upgrades will put the focus on more advanced video recording features, such as improved optical zoom. That'd be cool. An upgraded system on a chip built around the same six cores of the current A14 chip will also be included. The company has tested... Oh, and in display, here's the bummer. The company has, dis has, has, has tested an in-display fingerprint scanner for this year's device. However, the feature will likely not appear on this generation, which was uh, a kick right in the old keister for me because that, that was the one feature I was truly excited about the most is just to have Touch ID. And it sounds now like instead of having a really cool marquee feature, iPhone 13 or 12S, whatever they end up calling it, is going to be more of an incremental upgrade, as, as uh, Mark says in his report, which was a bummer, man. I was hoping we we're going to see something bigger and better for uh, this next generation, but uh, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Whatever it is, I'm sure once it gets announced, I'll uh, forget that I ever made any disparaging comments about it and probably just buy one. Uh, let's see. The other part that you may be interested in is Apple is set to incorporate Wi-Fi 6E technology into its new phones for this year. And the technology is expected to become standard in both iOS and Android smartphones in 2022. That's according to Digitimes. Now, Wi-Fi 6. Faster Wi-Fi and um, more reliable Wi-Fi. But the problem is, is to take advantage of the new 6 gigahertz band, which is going to be added, you're going to need a new router. And I don't know if you guys have taken a look at the routers that support this technology, but they're not cheap. <laughs> they are like five or $600. I'm kind of waiting till new mesh technology integrates this feature because I don't want just a solo router for my property. My, my, my property is just way too long for a single, a single router model. I have to have like mesh routers in order to make Wi-Fi work on, on the cult command compound, you know, like all the, <laughs> um, all the turrets that we have, the automatic turrets, the lasers <laughs> that are patrolling for Alexi e. Heath and any nine to five Mac writers that come onto the compound, they all use, advanced internet and algorithms to make sure that they are not going to accidentally fire upon people who are allowed to be here. And so we have to have really reliable internet and, you know, you got to make sure you do what you can to make sure that no one from the verge, no Alexi e. Heath and no nine to five Mac writers, you know, encroach on your compound. So there you go. That's your update for iPhone 13. You skipped over the one, the most interesting one, the LTPO low temperature poly's crystalline oxide display. Yeah, did you just rattle that off the, off the top of your head? <laughs> well, I'm reading it. <laughs> wow. Later, Katie. All right. Well, uh, please give us the update then. You're right because I skipped over that part. So at least one of the new, one of the new phones is going to have this, you know, LTP, LTPO screens, and um, which they've used on the Apple Watch for several uh, years, but it allows the screen to slow down and, as in always on mode, to save battery. So that suggests that maybe the iPhone is going to get always on screen at least one of the models that's a great point that's a great point thank you for bringing that up yeah so that's the fancy technology that allows your iphone or your apple watch to always stay on because it doesn't have to refresh all the time so it sounds like variable refresh rate which would make it better for gaming and also the always on display which man 
that's a game changing feature. Actually, that would be a great marquee feature, wouldn't it? Always on display. So it's just yeah. always there. That's that's a good and if point. It came to, if it only came to one model, I guess what? The Pro models? That would be my guess. And then there was another report out this week that uh, we thought LiDAR was coming to all the iPhone models. But now it turns out it's probably only going to come to the, the Pro models, which, you know. Did you hear my, did you hear my nasal snorting there? <laughs> <laughs> that goes along with his face. It's like, who cares? <laughs> Does anyone care about lighter? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> widely despised nasal. Yeah, that that says it all right there. Lidar, cool technology, but a technology that it's it's tantamount to the um, the Touch Bar, in my opinion. Looks fancy, <laughs> sounds cool. Are you actually going to use it? Mm. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Well, he's in photography, right? Low light photography. I mean, there's one useful. Yeah, that is true. One, one, one case where it is used. And autofocus in in video and stuff, which would be useful. But the autofocus on the on the iPhones is already so spectacular. I, I mean, the lidar might make it better, but it's already so good. I kind of wonder if people would even notice that um, it is marginally better. So there you go. Kind of a bummer for iPhone 13, but let's not, let's not get disappointed yet, okay? Because like I said, we don't know all the details. This is just a report from Mark Gurman. Yes, he, he tends to be accurate, but let's wait and see what Apple actually announces before we, uh, before we get disappointed, which we all know is not going to happen. We'll, we'll, we'll buy whatever they ended up uh, releasing <laughs> there. So let's talk about Macs next there, Lewis, because um, according to Gurman, he's affirming that, oh, yes, we are going to get a larger iMac with a more powerful Apple silicon system on a chip. And, and that might be my next computer. That's the one that I'm most excited about at this point. Yeah, he says it's uh, en route, could feature an even faster M2X chip. That's the first time I've heard anybody bandy about <laughs> M2X. Yeah, me too. What happened to the M1X? Come on. I know. Where's. Yeah. Anyway, uh, next generation all in one is expected to replace the 27 inch iMac that's out there currently with an even larger screen, perhaps around 30 inches, and could well be Apple's fastest desktop to date. Uh, Gurman says he absolutely believes that this uh, this thing is on the way. Uh, he says Apple increasing the screen size in the smaller model from 21.5 inches to 24 inches seems to indicate that the 27 inch model could see a size increase as well. That, that makes total sense, right? I mean. It yeah. almost seems like uh, it doesn't even actually seem like he's like, you know, quoting, you know, three unnamed sources. It almost just seems like he's extrapolating. Yeah, yeah. Like and and I mean, it, it makes perfect sense. Right. I mean, so uh, anyway, um, Gurma said the larger iMac is likely to feature an M1X, the beefier version of the current M1 or an M2X like the 24 inch version. It could also feature that slimmer design and other big improvements that we all know and love and. Uh, you know, this is the machine you're waiting for, right, Irfan? This is the uh, <laughs> the video editor's dream machine right here. Something with the M1X, the M2X, and uh, like a big, beautiful display. Yeah, this is the one that I'm waiting for. And especially because the, the new MacBook Pros are going to be incredible. But they're also going to be so much more expensive for what you get. You, you get just a lot more performance for your money when you buy an iMac. And they're so sleek. They're, they're, they're so slim. And you put an M1X or an M2X in there with all the other advanced technology Apple building in. And it's like, dude, if, if you're a Final Cut Pro editor, this is going to be the machine to beat, I think. It's probably going to blow the performance of the MacBook Pro out of the water. Uh, maybe it won't now that we're doing a system on a chip. Um, those, things are so, those things are so efficient that they might have the exact same chip in the MacBook Pro as they do in the, uh, in the iMac. In fact, you know we have the same M1 chip across... The, uh, the 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 13-inch MacBook Pro, the MacBook Air, the Mac Mini, so it might be the exact same chip across the entire uh, the entire line of products, which would be interesting because previously, when when they were working with Intel, they had different GPUs and different CPUs, and so they would have to like put different hardware into their different product offerings. And now there's essentially going to be two offerings: the, the the consumer line of chips and then the Pro line of chips. And then it's like, choose your form factor at that point, right? Do you want a laptop with the chip? Do you want a, uh, a desktop with the chip? Do you want a Mac Mini with no display with the chip? Do you want a Mac Pro with the chip? It, it, it sounds like that's the way they're going. At least it does to me. 
So if they are going to put the same chip in um, all the same computers, then 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 it's going to be a, a kind of a harder decision. I don't think they're going to be able to squeeze out any extra performance um, from the M2, whether they put it in the MacBook Pro or the or the the iMac, because the things are already so efficient. In fact, a great story that um, you guys may have seen this week. Uh, I think it was from iMore. They were reporting on a story about uh, one of the executives in a meeting with the marketing team. And the marketing team was using, I think, the MacBook Air for the first time. And they were using it for a while, and the battery the battery meter was not dropping. And so they were like, oh, we found a bug. The, the, the battery meter stuck. And he, he's like, no, that's not a bug. The, the battery efficiency is so, it, is so much better than it ever was before it just barely moves. And so even the marketing team was surprised. They were so surprised by the battery life in the new MacBook Air that they thought that the battery meter was broken. They were going to they were going to report that as a bug to the engineering team cuz it's just so outrageous. So you might end up seeing the same chip across the entire line. Another welcome change and and one that is really long overdue. And that is <laughs> new FaceTime cameras. You know, it, it only took a worldwide pandemic and everyone working from home for Apple to realize that the webcams and all their Macs are absolute doo-doo butter. And it looks like that's finally going to change. I mean, when, 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 I use the, um, when I use the webcam in my wife's MacBook Air, it looks like I'm broadcasting from a cave in Afghanistan. It's so bad. It's so embarrassingly bad. You, you, can, you can barely see me. Like, I'm dark. The whole room behind me is completely blacked out. And we can have all the lights in the living room on. And yet, it's still unable to actually generate a decent-looking picture. And that's true across all of the notebooks. I mean, the, the, the webcams in all the notebooks are so horrendously bad. And you're spending, you know, 1000 to 3000 $4,000 for a MacBook Pro. It's, it's inexcusable. That the webcams are as bad as it's they weird. Are. It's a weird blind spot, isn't it? Why, you know, why are they? Why do they? Haven't they improved the cameras? It seems that it would be kind of like fairly straightforward to do. It seems. Yeah. I don't know what the uh, well, especially because are. we know they have the technology. It's in the iPhone, <laughs> right? <Yeah. laughs> so all they would have to do is move that technology into the Mac, and you know, it wouldn't be super power hungry because it's in the iPhone right now. So they can make it power efficient. So to me, the only reason they don't do it is to save themselves money. That seems to be the only reason. They want to make an extra buck. TC is tr- just trying to squeeze out as many bucks as he can get off that MacBook Pro. But when you're buying a $4,000 machine like my my MacBook Pro is was, the fact that the webcam looks like it was from an iPhone from like the iPhone 5 era is, is truly embarrassing. And it, it is something that needs to be fixed. So back to the story. Uh, according to a uh, a new Twitter leaker, uh, uh, FaceTime 1080p FaceTime cameras are coming to the next generation Mac models, and so I hope this means that we're also going to get uh, computational HDR, like all like the magic stuff that we have gotten on the iPhone to make the picture look good in dark rooms, because that's really what we need. But just this one tiny feature, which I don't know how much those camera modules cost Apple, but if I had to guess, I'd say probably like, what, 10, 20, 30 bucks or something. This would make such a huge, massive improvement for so many people since everyone's working from home now. Uh, it would be a, a significant feature that wouldn't cost Apple a lot of money to improve all the different Mac models. So that's, uh, that's definitely going to be a, a welcome feature. Dude, we are cruising through this show. I think we're almost done. Leander. What's going on here? I, I just feel like we didn't have uh we didn't spend as much time on all these things because um you know and we, everyone's kind of feeling mopey because you know, they're sick and so you we know just what didn't it have is. To, yeah what we didn't talk about the giveaway oh well should oh, we do that oh. should we do that real fast let's see here yeah I mean you don't want to blaze by it do you this week uh, we're giving away on the uh, website there you go let's you click on the thing that says win a MagSafe compatible perfect clear case from Spec that's what? this week's giveaway. What a segue there, Lewis. Yeah. Hey, it's uh, so we're giving away. It, it's a Spec Presidio, perfect, clear, compatible with MagSafe case, which is kind of a mouthful, I gotta say. Anyway, it's worth fifty bucks. It's uh, Spec's most protective clear case yet, and uh, we're giving away four of them. So you know, decent odds. You go and you sign up. Uh, it's free to sign up. You get a new one every week. This week, it's it's uh, that fine-looking clear 
spec iPhone case. Nice. Let's uh, do a couple comments here. We got some people who are in here. They're uh, cranking out some wisdom here. So the the Mac geek says the Linksys, the Linksys uh, Atlas Max has mesh Wi-Fi 6E. Oh shoot! Now that is interesting. Okay. Um, and 6E uh, really? Yeah. I wonder how much. I wonder how much those cost. Adam Broussard Jeez. wants to hear more nasal noises. <laughs> Who doesn't? <laughs> Oh my god! That's me. That's me searching for tips. That's 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 me preparing for this show. I'm just I'm going over the entire internet. I'm just looking for clues, looking for tips, looking for like stories. A truffle pig. <laughs> I'm also looking for truffles. I found one once. You know, it was does, delicious. Does, does your nose have its own Patreon? I could start one, Lewis. <laughs> How much money are you willing to throw down? We could do some. Uh, we could do some nasal ASMR. Okay. <laughs> oh jeez. That could be something that. Uh, we can work uh-huh. in for you. Uh, let's see here. Um, Ulysses says webcam is more important now than ever before, since uh, most here, of us are, are working from home. Yeah, dude, I totally agree. I mean, I, I, there's so many there's so many jobs out there now that are just remote. It's actually pretty cool. I mean, that's 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 the one I think positive that came out of you know our pandemic situation is now there's just a lot of companies who realized, hey, we don't need you in the office. If you want to work from home, work from home, work from home, which I I have been, you know, primarily working from home for years. And dude, once you get used to it, it's really hard to go back to the office. It's like, oh man, you got to shower. A, there's that. And then you got to go in and you got to be in the office and the air's stale and there's all like the fluorescent lighting like I'd much rather be here in the Colt Command Center Unshowered. overlook surveying my land, overlooking the turrets, making sure that Alexi Heath doesn't sneak onto the property. <laughs> and just being at home, you know, you get to eat your own food and walk around. Like sometimes I'll go on, like a jog in the middle of the day. You know, it's like it's just so much better being at home. Let's see here. <laughs> Is there a Cult of Mac Discord? Now, are you talking about the very exclusive Cult Club? Because we have one of those and uh, we can get you the link for that. I don't think Cult of Mac has a Discord. Do they, Lewis? No. Do you even know what that means? The Discord? Oh, come on. <laughs> It's a place where you play darts, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, see, you knew. I, I knew that. I, I knew that you knew. So yeah, there is a. Um, let's see here. I'm gonna. I'm gonna drop a. Uh, there we go. I'm gonna drop a link here, right in the comments, if you want to join the very exclusive cult club. Oh, that's that's Ooh. not that's not what that is at all. Why did that? Not Whoa! Happen? I don't know what that was. Oh, wait a second. <laughs> hey, hey. Uh, let's see here. Let me copy it and let me see if that works. I'll I'll post this right in the chat. I know this is excellent radio. There we go. If you want to join the very exclusive cult club. There you go. All right. Uh, oh, you know what? Real quick, before we dive into this last story here, since we have a little extra time, we're going to be talking about... Uh, 69, dude! <laughs> before we do that, let me just give a quick plug to uh, ColtCloth.co. If you're unfamiliar, is a... Well, it's the most cutting-edge, high-tech line of cleaning cloths that you can get for your iPhone, for your sunglasses, for your optical equipment, your lenses, your Mac, you name it. These cult cloth are constructed with this really special fiber that goes through a process that breaks the fiber down and creates all this additional surface area in the fiber, which is what gives cult cloth its magical, mythical, some would say, cleaning power. So it has all these cracks in the, fi- in the fibers themselves which creates all these spaces for like debris to like go into, so they're just drastically better at cleaning your technology. And do you just you, you the, when you first use them, you'll just be surprised how well they work. Like you run them over. I just do a little bit of breath, like a little <laughs> right on the iPhone, and then I wipe the cloth over my iPhone, and there's literally nothing left. There's nothing there but sparkling glass and metal. It picks up absolutely everything. It does the same thing to your keyboard if you have a grimy keyboard. Plus, with our new cult cloth duo, I have one right here. It's got a short pile on one side, long pile on the other side. So one side, really great for your screens, your Apple Watch, what have you. And then the long pile side, you can use it for your keyboard. And the fibers are so long, it will reach down around your keys and grab all the dirt and grime, even around your keycaps, and clean the deck of your keyboard so there's nothing left down there. Just a really great product. I use them all the time across my, uh, my different sunglasses, I use them um, uh, on my iPhone, my iPad, my Macs. I mean, you name it. Several people have told me that they have crocheted them into underpants 
and wear those for extra uh, w- extra wicking moisture control when they're going on runs and stuff. I think that's weird, especially w- the people that sent me pictures. I wish you hadn't done that, but uh, I guess it does work. Yes, Lewis, what? How, how, do, they, how do they work on chickens? I haven't tried it on my chickens, but um, I should give that a shot. Maybe cut them into pieces and put them in the bottom of the chicken cage and see if that helps with <laughs> absorbing all the chicken pee-pee. I don't, I don't know why you'd want to do that, but um, I could try and report that back to you. Anyway, coltcloth.co, coltcloth.co, if you want to um, grab a couple of those, and if you use code coltcast at checkout, you'll score a free carry cloth, which is the uh, portable edition of the colt cloth, which super portable. They also work well. Great for on-the-go use for your iPhone, sunglasses, glasses, and stuff. I just don't think oh, that you'll find any kind of uh, clean cloths that work better than these. Yeah, Lewis, what? So it's C-A-R-R-Y cloth, not C-A-R-R-I-E cloth. Uh, C-A-R-R-Y, yes. The oh, carry okay. Cloth. Yep. The, the C-A-R-R-I-E cloth would be for removing pig's blood, right? Yeah, and, you know, <laughs> helping with exorcisms and, and that type of thing, you know. We're we're thinking about carrying a line of those as well, but um, at this point we're just we're just focusing on technology and not exor- exorcisms. <laughs> uh, all right, so there you go. Let's talk about sixty nine, dude. We got a great story. This is one of the funniest Apple stories I think that's ever come across my desk. I'm gonna send it over to Leander to uh, give us the specifics on why you won't see the number sixty nine in your weather app. Yeah. So. Um... It's uh, apparently you can never be certain it's going to be 69 degrees in Cupertino. Uh, it might be what it, what may be what may be an amazing level of prudishness. Apple's default iPhone weather app reportedly will not indicate that the temperature is one degree warmer than 68. So according to the Verge, some recent versions of the weather app round up to 70 degrees Fahrenheit rather than admit the temperature is actually <laughs> 69 degrees. Reportedly, this 69, is true for the weather app. And- oh, sorry, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> my, my bad. So. This is supposed to be true for the weather app in 14.6, um, but not all previous versions. So it's been theorized that this base cause is that the app is converting from Celsius temperatures. When the temperature is 20 degrees Celsius, that converts to 68 degrees Fahrenheit. And when it's 21 degrees, that converts to 69.8, which is rounded up to 70 degrees. So 69 gets skipped over. Hmm. So whether the cause is pretty or rounding, the bug has been fixed in iOS 15. The upcoming version of the weather app will display 69 degrees as the current temperature. Oh, thank God. <laughs> yeah, I, I know how, uh, how important <laughs> that number is to you, Lewis. <laughs> 69 degrees. And you said it was the funniest story. I think it's the biggest non-story ever. <laughs> well, you know. yeah, it's funny because you could, you could totally see it being that TC is just so family-friendly that he wouldn't want that number displayed on, on iPhones anywhere. You could totally see that being true. I, mean, I don't know. Right? They have what was uh, uh They have you know they sell stuff at uh, they, you know they sell stuff for sixty nine dollars. <laughs> uh, you know this the number sixty nine is all over Apple, isn't it? Hold on, what? there was a list somewhere that I, I don't saw know about that either. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, sixty nine gate. I haven't heard that. Yeah, I know where to find it. Okay, pull it up. Number sixty nine is all over Apple. <laughs> Apple's all about 69. That, that's a direct about? quote. <laughs> no, you know, I I, sorry, I hate to be juvenile here, but the, the number 69 really is funny. I mean, <laughs> m- maybe it's like an 80s thing because it was like when movies and stuff were making m- making jokes about it the most often, which is why I think it's just so funny. But like, it, it really is. Like anytime anyone says 69, dude. Um, you got to just chuckle a little bit. Did you find that, uh, did you find that uh, article? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so you know, the Compass app will show you 69 degrees if you're yeah. gonna, if, if you're going in that direction. If you have in the Finder, you can have 69, you know, files in a folder. So there's all sorts of, you know, you can get all kinds of apps to display the number 69. <laughs> it's just not, the, just not the weather app. Not the so, weather so app. then it seems more likely that um, this explanation of it's calculating the weather in Celsius and then converting it over to uh, Fahrenheit would be the culprit here. And then it will get fixed in um, iOS 15. I just installed iOS 15, by the way. Uh, you know, it's interesting. Um, I'm not sure that I love the new notifications. I can't show them to you right now. Shoot, there's too many here. But uh, 
I do love the new browser, man. Like, like the, the way Safari works with um, the, uh, let me see if I can show this here. You guys probably can't see this because my phone's too bright, but it shows the address bar across the bottom now. And you can swipe on the address bar to go to different tabs. Man, that's so much better than it was before. And actually makes it, you know, like easy to go from tab to tab. So they've made some really nice. I like it too, but there's a lot of hate for it, isn't there? Looking on Twitter, like a lot of people really don't like the new tab bar. I think the one in, the, in on the iPad is a bit more problematic because it kind of moves around a little bit and um, it's harder to uh, to choose the right tab. But the address bar on the bottom of the, on the phone is much better. Yeah, you know, I saw some heat on it too. Um, and, and I think, I, at least for, as far as I understood it, I, I didn't look super into that uh, controversy, but it's, people were not happy with the animation, the, the way the animation was happening. But then Apple already fixed it in the in the uh, new version of iOS 15, the new beta. So I don't know, man. I mean, I, I've been using it and dude, I, I, I love it. I think it makes so much more sense when you're scrolling up and down instead of having the um, address bar at the top, it's right at the bottom there. And then once you're on a website, uh, let's see here, the address bar kind of disappears and it goes back to the very bottom of the phone. And then as soon as you start scrolling, it like animates up and it goes up maybe like, I don't know, like a half People inch. don't like that. I saw a lot of complaints about that. Yeah, I, I like it. It's just right under your thumb now. Anyway, I know this is not interesting because um, we're talking about UI elements that we can't really show you right now. So um, download the uh, the public beta and see for yourself. There's a really there's a lot of nice improvements in iOS 15. But uh, I, I, I think that's it, guys. I think that uh, we got to go ahead and wrap it up there. That's uh, that's all the cool cast we, we have for you guys this week. Not a ton of well, news to talk about this week. And, uh, you know, Leander is dying, so he wants to get back on that couch yeah. behind him and, uh, <laughs> and lay down. So we'll let him uh, we'll let him call it good there. That's all the cool casts we have for you guys this week. If you want to come say hi, we're all on Twitter. I'm at Airfon, E-R-F-O-N. Le- Leander is at LK. Lewis is at Lewis Wallace. It's been the cool cast. The best 30-plus minute album conversation you're going to hear all week long. New episodes of the, of the cool cast come out every Thursday night. Thanks, everyone, for listening and for watching live. And we will see you guys next time. Later, (laughs) y'all. Hold on, excuse me. What say you, Bill and Ted? (laughs) <laughs> don't act like you're above laughing at 69 jokes Lewis. Uh, uh, I know those 68 would be funny 70 would be funny you're more of a 68 guy <laughs> I heard Leander he's more of a 96 guy <laughs> <laughs> what <laughs> <laughs> 96! What's that, uh, 69 with a trampoline? What? All right, I'm gonna stop recording. What? <laughs> I fucking, We're now my eyes going. Are... I think you need to take now? a couple of puffs on the old Puffco Plus, Leander. That's gonna make you feel uh, world better. Broken. You know what I'm saying? Even that didn't, even that didn't bring a smile to his face. All right, I'm hitting it. We're gone. 501.